Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM CEO Dan Morricone marks 100 days in office this week and has offered some insight into the direction ESCOM is taking under his leadership. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss these key themes. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. It seems tackling load shedding and boosting morale remain key focus areas for the CEO. Yes, I think, you know, load shedding is the big thing that hangs over Eskom. It's uh, decimated it in financially in many ways because it's not selling its product. It's not earning any money. Uh, when it's load shedding, it's having to spend a lot of money on diesel. And so, therefore, you know, from a business sustainability perspective, from a reputational repair perspective, the, the, the big monster that has to be slain is, uh, is load shedding. And they've gone now over 70 days without load shedding, which uh, there's still a lot of suspicion among South Africans as to how this has happened. How did it coincide with probably South Africa's most competitive election, or definitely South Africa's most competitive election since 1994? And has it become down to diesel? And I think he used uh, this week uh, at a presentation he made to the Sanya to say that no, it hasn't been about diesel, it's about the energy, the generation recovery plan, which has been underway for more than a year now. And he basically gave a May on May comparison saying in May last year, we spent 2.8 billion on diesel and this year we spent about 280 million. So it's a, it's a major reduction in terms of how much they're spending. And it's really down to the stabilization of the coal fleet. But that, you know, remains a precarious thing. We know that uh, the coal fleet is, has been unreliable for many years and inconsistent. Um, and you know, if there's a number of units that go down, we, we back to where we were. Uh, although the good news, I suppose, is that it really over the last 70 days, we've seen a real reduction in the unplanned breakdown. So if they consistently keep below this 12,000 megawatt type level, which is still very high, you know, 12,000 megawatts out at any one point, but, you know, at one point we were closer to the 20,000 megawatt level when we were really in the deep load shedding days or over 18,000 at least. So the fact that we're there means that we're not load shedding at the moment. But if, if there's anything that a number of units that trip and we get to sort of above that uh, 15,000 level that uh, they've said for winter, we will go into stage two load shedding. So we're not out of the woods and the only way to get out of the woods is to add new reliable generation and hopefully do that with the cheapest electrons. At, and at the moment, we know that the that is uh, renewables but with backed up by some form of uh, flexible supply, either gas to power or even using the coal fleet differently or, uh, you know, battery energy storage or pumped hydro. There's also a change in the way ESCOM will be approaching renewables and coal retirements. Yes, uh, you know, Coal retirement is part of the integrated resource plan of 2019 and there's a schedule. But, you know, with the deep load shedding crisis and the fact that we haven't built at the pace and scale that we need to replace the unreliable, dirty electricity with, you know, reliable, cleaner electricity, there's a gap. And the government and the Eskom board have given permission for an extension of the life of some of these power station units that were supposed to start being decommissioned. Kamati closed um, and there's been a lot of political fighting around that. And we're now expecting Hendrina, Camden and Hurtflay to close and they've extended that, the life of that horizon. So immediately that changes things in the way they approach the just energy transition and accessing the just energy transition partnership financing that's available to them to do that. So they're, going, they, they're basically wanting to front end load the renewables rollout at the, in and around those power stations. Now you remember in the past they were leasing land around those power stations to private operators. They now want to look at using that land themselves in partnership, in public private partnership or, or PSP, uh, public sector participation type partnership, using that land to build those plants, which will immediately start creating those alternatives uh, uh, you know, economic activities around those power stations ahead of decommissioning. So what that's going to mean, we don't know because uh, in terms of our decarbonisation commitments, we don't know. When uh, studies are, are now underway to understand that because we have put out a, um, a nationally determined contribution and we obviously want to abide by that. 
And if we don't abide by that, there's no way we're going to get access to the concessional finance that's being offered. So we, it's a navigation that we're going to have to do. So it's, it's going to be an interesting period, but it is a change of strategy, a change in tech. Um, and uh, other than the, the, the renewable energy projects around, and Latabo will be the first one, and a 75 megawatt solar plant next to Latabo in the Free State, and looking to replicate that across other power station sites. Uh, they're also looking at pumped storage. Now, this is a controversial area. Is pump storage competitive anymore relative to battery storage? And there's a big debate about that. But uh, they're looking at the Tabatsi's been on the cards for many, many years. And that's definitely now moving uh, more seriously uh, from an Eskom perspective. And we'll have to see how they'll go about that. But we know Eskom's balance sheet's not in a position to do these things alone. So in with all the projects, the renewables projects and the pump storage projects, uh, they're going to have to do it in partnership. The separation of the National Transmission Company South Africa has big implications for ESCOM and the markets. Yes, now July is the D-Day for, uh, for this company, NTCSA, to come into operation. Uh, it has its independent board now and we know there that that's the key, the future, that's the heart of the system. So it's the, the grid and the system operation and the market operator are inside this business. And we're moving into this new world where there are going to be a number of generators across the, uh, the spectrum from Eskom itself through to a number of private operators in different forms. These can be large and small and all the way down to a household level where we could be feeding into the grid. So this is a whole new world and it's a very important development. We've got this NTCSA coming into operation as an independent subsidiary, but eventually stripped out uh, from Eskom Holdings uh, under the current uh, framework. Uh, and uh, it is going to really allow for this competition at the generation level, allow for more trading. Now, it's a whole new world and also has limitations under the current legislation. Uh, therefore, we had this the big momentum around the Electricity Regulation Act. That hasn't been signed by the President and there's a lot of uncertainty now as to whether it can be signed. There's also constitutional issues with uh, the ERA as it stands and so it's not clear whether the President can actually sign it. Um, so we'll have to see under the current framework how far Eskom can go. They've really pushed the envelope and we are separating vertically the monopoly business. But getting it to a new level does need a new legislative framework and we're not quite there yet. But there's a lot that can still be done under the existing framework. So it is a whole new world and it's going to be interesting to see how independent that board functions, how independent that, and, uh, that uh, NTCSA operates to really be a neutral platform and not have a bias one way or the other towards its holding company, which is Eskom. And then there's the uncertainty that has arisen as a result of the 2024 elections. Yes, you know, so every CEO that's ever been at Eskom knows that this is a, a, a political hot potato and it gets very, very influenced uh, Eskom by the government of the day. It is a 100% owned company of the government. Um, so uh, the elections, as we know, it will impact all of us as South Africans and uh, CEO Marikani, Dan Marikani said that, you know, it, it has an impact. So and the, the sort of composition of the government is going to have an impact. At the moment, we, as I say, there's a lot that can be done under the current legislation, but we do need a new legislative and regulatory framework, and that is really driven by the government of the day. So it depends very much around what those government policies are towards the electricity supply industry in general, and then Eskom in particular. And I think now we are in a bit of an uncertain phase. So we've been moving in a certain reform trajectory and there can be a bit of a either a dislocation, which I think would be very bad, but, uh, but there could also be a slowdown in, in momentum, which would also be very, very bad because I think this momentum is important. We've already seen the benefits of the momentum and of the partnership coming through. This load shedding free period has been a lot about Eskom hard work and diligence, but it was about uh, one, the fiscus giving it the money and the certainty to actually plan maintenance and contract with OEMs to do the maintenance properly 
and there is a whole new relationship there. But it also got supported quite uh, fervently by the private sector through the, through the NECOM structures, and uh, that's important. We need that support to continue. And then there's the other support that's coming from outside of ESCOM, the, the confidence to invest in these very long life assets. You know, if you don't have confidence in the future of the, the economy and the direction of the economy and the direction of the government of the day, it's very hard to put in something that's going to last well be long beyond 20 years. You know, we might, they might have 20 year PPAs or power purchase agreements, but these assets are, are going to last longer than that. So you have to have confidence. So we're in this period now where we are uncertain. Uh, it could definitely shake Eskin. It can definitely shake, shake the way we're going in terms of our electricity market reforms, but it could also undermine the, the confidence that is needed to, to really continue with really capital, very capital heavy and very risky investments because they're so long term. So we have to hope for the best. At the moment, I suppose we almost have to wa hope for the least worst outcome. And we're in a process now that uh, all of us as South Africans are watching very closely because it's going to impact us in our daily lives. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.